this little shrub is from the eastern part of the Chihuahuan Desert. It's um, Anisia canthus quadrifidus variety ridei, but better known as Mexican flame. And it is the absolute best hummingbird plant that you can have in your garden for summer use. Sure, there are many penstemons and, and salvias that bloom in the spring and in the fall, but in the summertime, this is an important nectar source for our urban hummingbirds. And while we're on the subject of hummingbirds, let me remind people that while nectar in your feeder is nice to provide for hummingbirds and it helps gives, give them a ready source of, of energy, they need the wildflower population in the area to also feed on so that they get the vitamins and minerals and the, the other things that come with feeding uh, from natural native plants. You're, you should also remember that 40% of a hummingbird's diet is insects. That's one of the reasons why we don't use insecticides except very, very sparingly uh, in the gardens. It only takes a drop or two of something like malathion to kill a little bitty bird that weighs less than an ounce. So be very judicious in your use of pesticides, read the labels, and target what you're trying to eliminate and not just spray everything. I would also like to point out the little red flowering pinstemon, another great hummingbird plant. And this one does bloom into the summer. It's just beginning its bloom. Most pinstemons bloom in the spring or in the fall. This one will also bloom into the summertime. This is pinstemon baracifolius, sold under the trade name Del Rio. You'll notice on most hummingbird plants that they have long tubular flowers. The long tubular flowers are held on long stems above the bulk of the plant so that hummingbirds can hover and not endanger their wings. Uh, that's always a good mark of a hummingbird plant. Hummingbirds are also attracted to flowers of other colors. It's just that they see red, as do most of us, see reds the best. One of the um, plants featured in the contemplative garden, which I recommend to homeowners, uh, particularly for their oasis zones, which this garden represents in a good xeriscape, is Salvia grigii, autumn sage or cherry sage. And it's available in most nurseries, uh, not even the special, not just the specialty nurseries, but in most of the big box nurseries uh, and in the small retail nurseries, you'll find Salvia grigii or autumn sage. Very good uh, for hummingbirds and also a very good source of color in your garden. The fountain is not a whole lot to look at, but it wasn't designed for humans, it was designed for birds. This fountain, as you can see, drips water over copper plates. Birds can land on it and safely drink without uh, threatening their wings, or without uh, danger of drowning, which is often the case in large pools. Um, unless there's uh, uh, shallow water, most birds do not like uh, these splashy fountains that we tend to have in, in so many of our landscape. And those also waste water, whereas this one simply recirculates with a little hidden pump at the bottom and is very uh, water conscious. Now this plant is not one that most people would walk into a nursery and pick up. This is Zisiphus obtusifolia, better known as lote bush or graythorn. And this is one of the very best wildlife plants that I can recommend to you, uh, simply because it, it sets such wonderful uh, fruit for birds and mammals. And as you can see, it's heavily pollinated by our native bees, not the honeybees, but the little small uh, native bees that uh, so often neglected in our landscape. Wildlife gardening, whether for uh, just hummingbirds and butterflies, which is what most people think of, is very, very rewarding. Um, you should plant with all kinds of critters in mind, not just the two common. 
um, like I say, hummingbirds and uh, butterflies.